In the real world, clean surfaces are not common. But when we create renders, our engines do the opposite by creating clean and straight surfaces by default. Therefore, we wouldn't be getting the most realistic results. In today's video, we're going to learn how to apply surface imperfections to our renders in order to make them look way more realistic. So let's start with why imperfections are important. As 3D visualizers, we have to pay close attention on where these imperfections appear in our day-to-day -day life and the way they look. We see scratches on our floors, fingerprints on our screens, watermarks on our shower glasses, etc. For example, without the scratches, this doorknob would look very plain and not very realistic. So now that you know why these imperfections are important, let's go ahead and see how we can apply them to our projects. So firstly, let's see where we can get surface imperfections. A few free sources that I use are ambientcg.com, texturebox.com and sharedtextures.com. You can find pretty good surface imperfections on these websites and I will leave a link in the description for each one of them below. So usually a few types of imperfections that I use are dust, scratches and fingerprints. After you have chosen a few textures for each type of these imperfections, we can go ahead onto our next step and see how we can apply them to our renders. So for this video, I am going to use Enscape for rendering, but this is applicable with any other rendering engine as well. So after you've downloaded your imperfection maps, your first instinct may be to just add those maps onto the roughness section in the materials tab. But for me, there's two different ways of applying these imperfections and depending on the case, I would choose either one of them. The first and quicker method is when I just apply the surface imperfection to a material through the material editor and add the imperfection map in the roughness section. As you can see, this worked pretty good in this case right here, but let's take a look at another instance where using this method wouldn't be a good idea. For example, let's say we want to apply fingerprints to our kitchen cabinets right here. And we would use the same method that we used on the last case. If we do that, we'll notice that the imperfections are just too much and definitely way too emphasized. Instead, we firstly would want to think where would be the most common spot that we would try to open a kitchen cabinet in real life. And that would be the spot that I would apply the fingerprints to. I begin by creating a new surface within the one that exists with a free hand line tool. That way it is as irregular as possible and in the new surface that we created I apply a copy of the material that it already exists. After I have created a copy of it, I would go ahead into our material editor and apply the imperfections map in the roughness section. Make sure that you match the specular parameter through the slider so the surfaces don't have too much of a difference between each other when they reflect. And after that you're pretty much done. A few other cases where we would apply imperfections to is glass tables, TV screens, shower glass doors, wooden floors, etc. For all these cases, the method to apply these imperfections is the same as the examples I showed earlier, but just remember to always think where these imperfections would appear in our daily life. So as you can see, just a few minutes of extra work will add an extra layer of detail onto your renders and it will make them look way more realistic. I hope that after watching this video you will start applying imperfections in your renders and if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out my Patreon, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.